Hi everyone, Mr. Lockwood here, back with another video. Attempt number three, first two were fails. First time I left the camera on pause for too long, drained it flat. Second time, just made an absolute mess of what I was trying to do. So here's try number three, we'll see if we can get it done properly this time. First of all, I want to show some stuff that um, Paul Springett sent through to me. If you don't know Paul or haven't checked out his channel, I recommend going and checking it. There's a lot of useful information on there. Paul's always sending stuff out into the community, packages overseas, packages to Australian lock sporters, and he's also always helping people with whatever information he can provide. Just generally an all-around top guy. Um, I saw a lock in one of his videos and commented and ended up communicating with Paul asking whether or not he'd like to do a trade. And Paul didn't want to do anything for a trade. He actually just said that he was going to give it to me, but I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, I will get yours sent through to you as well, Paul. Anyway, let's get back to it. I've got a Lockwood V7 cabinet lock. I think he said it was a 690. I'll have to go and check the notes again. Beautiful old brass piece. That's a UY profile one that I didn't have and now that's going into the collection with the rest of them. He also sent through a selection of key blanks. I'll leave these ones till the end. Um, LW5R which is the reverse profile for the LW5 and LW4R reverse profile of the LW4. The Longer ones here, the LW21R, are actually the blanks for post office blocks, so which are aggressors. That's actually the name given to them. I'm guessing that must be the company name that produces them for Australia Post. Anyway, they're a seven pin lock. But I found on the ones that I've had a play with anyway, the pins are rounded. Instead of like your Lockwood bevels, where it's got a distinct edge on the bevels, it's actually just domed. So um, I don't know how else to describe it. It makes for easy picking, but I think it may have to do with wearability. Just making it so that the lock lasts longer under all the operations that it has. The funny thing about this LW20, uh, yeah, LW21R profile is that it is the reverse of the C4. So these are long versions of these, except for the key bow. So I took an LW5R. So it's a six pin variant. I've got cuts coming in on the V rather than in line straight to the top. And now we have. That's better. Now we have it keyed up. Functions nicely. Once again, thank you very much, Paul. He also included because he knows that I like playing with restoring the two three fours and the two four fives so he sent through some retaining pins they work for both shackle and plug the plugs which go on top of those retaining pins and some chamber plugs which is very very generous of him it's awesome and they'll most definitely come in handy. Um, the second stuff up with recording was, I was trying to show a method for removing the plug, or some people call it the core, but the lock plug from the body without having to de-plug the top. And for the most part, it worked. Um, all I did was removed the retaining pin plug from there, took the retaining pin out, popped the lock, 
I was able to rotate the actual core plug 180 degrees and from there you can actually insert rather like a euro shoe insert a tool up there which rests against the plugs at the top here and holds the drivers and the springs up in the body once that was done I could remove the plug it was a five pin but I rekeyed it to a six pin and upon trying to reinsert the plug just because of the way these plugs are made because the Uco core or plug is very much a clone of the Lockwood. This one's a ratty old one that's been chewed up, but where the pin, retaining pin, sits across like that to prevent the plug from coming out of the body, when it was inverted like this, when it was five pins, I could get it in deep enough so that the drivers would rest against the plug. But once I'd put the sixth pin in, it would actually go into this lower part, the channel there, and then even though I'd get it rotated back to where it should be, couldn't go in any further because the driver was actually stuck in there. So maybe with a bit of modification of the technique it might work, but instead I ended up deplugging it anyway. No, that was a waste of five or ten minutes and a bit of recording time. The reason I chose this particular padlock was that it's one which I obtained in a bundle of locks recently. It came with no keys, like most locks that I buy online do. And instead of just being standard drivers, it has spools in it and also what I can only describe as Abus serrated. One ring at the top, one ring at the bottom. It's pretty shallow. You feel a little bit of a click when you're picking them, but aside from that, they don't make much difference to actual picking. And I thought it might make an interesting one to show rear pinning, but instead it's already reassembled and keyed. Nice enough padlock though. So I thought, okay, instead I'll use just this radio 234 that I have. It works fine. It's just seen better days. Looks like someone hit it with a hacksaw or something at one stage and a bit of a grinder mark. The locksmith wasn't very sort of gentle when they've reassembled it. It's seen a file at some point. Overall, it's just not a very neat padlock. Even with linishing and that, it's not going to come up 100%. So I'll use it for a sacrificial so I can show people what's going on. One thing to note, whoever's assembled it has used oversized plugs for the retaining pins. They're actually the same diameter as the chamber plugs. And like we can see, I mean, there's ones that Paul sent through. They're two different sizes. These ones are for the chambers. These ones are for the retaining pins. These ones are of smaller diameter and unless it's just they used to do them to larger spec and then went to smaller spec the locksmith must have used larger ones so either way the principles that i'm going to show are going to be the same anyway so that'll be for a future video not this one next hopefully final part of the video is in relation to Paul's back to front challenge. I did think of um, doing the back to front with my homebrew 12 pin, but yeah, to achieve that, I'd need to use an exceptionally long pick and yeah, possibly bore the heck out of everyone. So instead, I'm going to use one of the newer 530. I say newer because they've got a taller Bible on them and it's actually slightly wider than the old style 530s. From what I hear, it's caused a bit of concern in the locksmith community because it doesn't fit into all of the old hardware anymore. It seems like a bit of a shitty money grab 
from Lockwood to me, but I'm not privy to industry, so I can't actually say yes or no. I can only make guesses. Um, what way would be best? Put it out there. We're already at 10 minutes. Sorry about the length of this, guys. So there's our lock sitting in backwards. I should show you that it actually works. Pinned up, key works nicely. Okay, Betty, probably not the best in the world, but it's what we've got to work with at the moment. I have plenty of other locks I could grab, but this one's just here, so. I'll use my homemade pry bar and homemade short hook. Uh, Craig Ritchie provided me with the nylon for this interesting camo i could work those scratches and that out of it again it's only for me so i'm not really too fussed on it being sure and perfect and these without a knob set or anything behind them are a dead core much like what paul was talking about in his last video actually there's no constant back pressure on them. You have to be careful how you set your pins and spools are a little bit different to work with than in a sprung pay block. Set something so I'll let them drop back down. Stitch it again. Okay, um, it feels like it would be pinned to if it was around the right way. Around the right way. Pin two again. And there we have it. A backwards 530 pick. Get the vice out of the way. Get a little pin and tray. Lock it back up because we do have the key. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now there are five pins. Can't focus. Five pins to the same key. So just standard drivers. But they are steel, which is interesting to note because this is sort of the cheaper end of Lockwood's entry sets or kicks. I've also noticed that unlike the padlock ones, I don't know how well this is gonna come through. Too much reflection, brightness. I've noticed that they do have artifacts, not quite as big as the nipples on the ones that Paul was showing, but they do have an artifact on the top 
of these spools. They're not quite as neat a finish as the ones found in the padlocks. But each one of those is a spool. And they have balanced, or semi-balanced, the stacks so that longer driver pins get shorter drivers, uh, sorry, longer key pins get shorter drivers. And they're using very short springs in them. Because it's just trying to save on room in that Bible, even though they made the Bible taller. Nothing special or interesting about that. Just a standard kick cylinder. But there's your backward lock pick challenge done, Paul. Um, find someone else amongst your viewers who you think's deserving, mate, and let them have my entry or my ticket. This has been Mr Lockwood, and thanks again for watching.